Following Napoleon's invasion of Spain, Spanish colonies in the Americas began to revolt against the crown. The Mexican War of Independence made it very difficult for Spain to protect its more remote territories, such as what would become Texas. This inability would lure many by the prospect of free land and potential wealth. Throughout the Wars of Independence, many men from the United States would join expeditions to try to take Texas from Spain. They did this either to declare their own independence or to unite the land with the ever-expanding United States. For the first nine years of the revolt, ownership over Texas was contested between the powers. The U.S. claimed that the Louisiana Purchase included all of Texas, while Spain believed the boundary rested at the Red River, leaving Texas under direct Spanish control. Some viewed that conflict over Texas would eventually result in a war between the two, as the United States stated that they would protect and back any settlement attempt by her citizens within the territory. Yet, only one such expedition would put that theory to the test. One that was largely lost to time, nothing more but a small footnote of history, but not today. It is June of 1819, and the long expedition had begun. In early 1819, Spain and the United States signed the adams onis Treaty, which established the boundary of the Louisiana Purchase at the Sabin River. Many Americans were outraged that the United States had abandoned any claim to Texas, Outrage was especially high in a town named Neches in Mississippi. James Long, a doctor, was one of the most vehement voices against the treaty. Public sentiment in the town soon swung to military action, and men began to gather for an invasion of Texas. They would soon elect Long as their leader, although his only prior military experience had been as a surgeon in the War of 1812. By the end of June, Long had received over $500,000 and over 200 men willing to join him on the expedition. On June 22nd, Long's forces declared a new government in Texas at the small town of Natadoches. Long was elected president and a Supreme Council was formed. The following day, they issued a Declaration of Independence modeled on the United States. The council also allocated 10 square miles of land to each member of the expedition and authorized the sale of additional land to raise cash for the government. Within a month of this declaration, the expedition had grown to over 300 members. They also began the first English language newspaper ever to be published in Texas called the Texas Republican, but it only lasted one month before being discontinued. However, the expedition soon ran low on provisions. Long would disperse his men to forge for food, but discipline began to break down, and many men would return home. In early November, 500 Spanish troops arrived in Texas and marched on the small republic. Long and his men withdrew, but over 40 would be captured. With Long managing to escape to Louisiana, while others would flee to Galveston and settle along the Bolivar Peninsula. Long joined the refugees at Boulevard Peninsula on April the 6th of 1820 with more reinforcements, all while trying to continue to raise money to equip a second expedition. The men who had joined Long were disappointed that they were paid in scripts instead of regular coin currency, and they, bet, and they gradually began to desert. By December of 1820, Long would have a contingent of only 50 men under his command. News of the expedition largely goes dark until September 19th of 1821, when Long and his men marched inland to capture Presidio Libijia. The town fell easily on October 4th, but four days later, Long was forced to surrender by Spanish troops. He would be taken prisoner and sent to Mexico City, where about six months later, he would be shot and killed by a station guard, his dream largely dying with him.